Hi, I'm Lori George with Let's Make Art, and today we're gonna be painting these wild sunflowers. Ooh. Yes, and we have Keenan here today running the camera. Hello, Lori. Hi, how are you today? Good, how are Good. you? Good, and so let's go ahead and go over the supplies. Today we're gonna be using three brushes. We have the three quarter inch classic wash, flat wash. We have the half inch classic flat wash. And we have the number eight round. So they're the brushes. To wash our brushes, we are going to use this brush basin here, which I love. Got some ridges on this side and we'll, I'll show you how much I enjoy this in a little bit here. It's a neat little tool. It is a neat tool for sure. We also today are gonna be using an outline. So you can, if you have the wetlands box, you'll have the outline included on there. If you don't, you can go to our website and get that. And with the outline, we're gonna be using some graphite paper and some tape, something to write with. I'm using a color pencil today. And what else? Oh, you also want a paper towel. I like to use shop towels, very absorbent. I can reuse them. And in the wetlands box, we have some fun texture tools that I wanted to share with you. And in, the, in this box, we're gonna be using a scraper tool. My scraper tool is gonna to look different than yours because we have a custom shape for you guys. And if you, so you can use the one that come in, comes in the box or if you have a wedge tool, this is a catalyst wedge. That's kind of a fun thing for spreading paint. You can use that. I also have a, some, we have some bamboo skewers that came in the box for scratching in. Those are kind of fun. I'll show you how to use those. And last but not least, actually we'll talk about the paint in a second, but kind of the star of this box are these Neocolor 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels. And I'll show you, I have the, the stash here. Oh snap. I've got the set, and this isn't even all of them because I bought some individual as well. <laughs> you can see these are well loved, right? So these are really cool, and I'm gonna show those you things are a sweet. lot about how, how to use those. And in fact, if you did get the if you did get the Wetlands box, there is a special box exclusive here that shows how, all about Neocolor Two Pastels, how to use them, and a special bonus project exclusive Ooh. box exclusive. Yeah, so I love Neocolors. Check them out if you haven't. Last but not least, we have our paint. So we're using acrylic paint today, and this is Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic. So I'm really excited to show you the pros of heavy body paint. Love it, this is artist quality, highly pigmented. Liquitex does a great job of giving like a, a nice range of colors and I like their packaging as well. Um, actually Liquitex is one of the first, I think they're the first um, company that made water-based acrylics. And they've been around for a long time, so that's kind of cool. Since 1955. Wow. We looked that up. We did. <laughs> so um, today the colors that we're gonna be using are Mars Black, Yellow Light Hansa, Napthal Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Cyanine Green. I usually just call it Thalo. Most people just call it Thalo Green. <laughs> and Titanium White. So those are our colors for today. And Liquitex, the heavy body paint, it's really creamy and smooth. You'll notice that it, it holds its shape really well and it's fun to work with because I feel like when I mix the colors that are highly pigmented, like I just get really vibrant, nice, nice colors that just make my artwork look even better. So I, I really like that. Cool. They do a good job. Okay. So let's talk about our steps. So we have, first we're gonna be doing our background with outline. We're gonna let that dry. And so dry, then we do the outline. Then we're gonna do our base layers of our stems and blooms. Then we're gonna cut in our background. So this is kind of a neat little, um, technique that we're gonna be learning today where we cut in the background after we've already painted some of our um, subject. Wow. It's a neat little trick. And then we're going to work on our blooms, add some shadows. Then we're gonna look at our stems and add some dimension there. Step six, we're gonna do some highlights. Seven, we're doing a final background layer. And eight, we'll do our finishing touches. Sweet. Sound good? Yes, it does. Okay. Eight Let's is great. Keep going. Okay. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to get some paper and we're using the Let's Make Art watercolor paper in the 9x12 size and we do the rough side up. And I also like to have an extra sheet of paper. If you've painted with me before, you know that I love to have an extra sheet of paper to do some 
brush off. I, make, I call it my brush board, so I can use my extra paint to put on here and make kind of a fun design, maybe an abstract, or really just kind of get the paint off of my brush, Whatever, however you want to look at it. Actually, Keenan, I don't know if you've been to the acrylic group on Facebook, but there are people who are just really raving about doing brush boards. Oh, I And I love it. it because it frees up their painting and like they don't feel like constrained by like a project and the steps, they can like be free and more expressive. And I think that's gonna really increase their skills. Cool. And then be like, just such great painters. So soon. So great. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep an extra sheet of paper. It can be one that you've already been working on or it can be a new sheet of paper. I've got something that I got some smudges on, so that's what I'm gonna use. Oh, and then also if you got the, we talk about palettes. If you got the wetlands box, you'll have a sample sheet of palette paper and you can use that to as your palette. Or you can see here, I'm using a glass palette, which is kind of like the creme de la creme. Creme de, de la palette. creme. Yeah, love it. Okay, so I think I do I'm like covered. that palette paper though, it's wild. The palette paper is nice. I, that is what I use at home a lot, for it's, sure. It's pretty cool. It is cool. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be using the step sheet to follow along as well, so feel free to do that. Let's get some paint out. We are going to start with a background wash of a hot pink, kind of like a red color. Ooh. And the reason why, if you kind of look at, let me show you on the like finished project, see how there's some pops of pink um, yes. showing through? You can't get that necessarily without doing some kind of a nice vibrant background oh. color, unless you were to painstakingly go in there. And, but this makes it look loose and expressive and adds depth and vibrancy to your painting. And so I'm excited to show you how to do that. Sweet. So we'll start with some red. And I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit here and a little bit of white. Now with heavy, like if you got the acrylic starter box, we put larger size paints in there because it's a starter box. And these are heavy body paints, so you don't need quite as much. It'll go farther. But we do need to make sure that we add water to it, and I'll show you um, what we want to do there. So I'm taking my three-quarter inch brush, and I'm going to go ahead and get it wet. I like to pre-moisten it, and then I'm going to dab off any excess there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red. So it's mostly going to be red, but I'm going to add a touch of white just to make it a little bit pink. You'll see. Okay, so a little bit of white. I'm going to mix that in. I'm mixing with my brush today. You're welcome to mix with a palette knife. These are, here's a couple that I like. I mix with, I tend to much mix with a brush though, quite a bit. Do you like to mix with a brush, Keenan? I do. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I haven't used a lot of pa palette knives before. Yeah, it's hard to mix like watercolor with a palette knife. Yes, it's very hard. <laughs> I actually have never tried it, so I can't say for sure. I just imagine. I, mean, I just it would assume be it is, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna dip and I'm gonna add water. So. With acrylic paint, you want to, and you can paint with different viscosities with acrylic paint. You can do fluid, you can do kind of a softer body, or you can do like a heavier body or even a thicker application, like impasto style. But for this project, I'm going to try and do a fairly fluid paint, not too watery, but where it glides. So see how my brush is kind of gliding back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth? We don't want drag. We want it to glide. Mm -hmm. And since this is a wash, I'm gonna add even more water. The main part, so a couple of reasons why we're doing this wash, let's just go ahead and brush it on, is to one, cover the white of our paper, okay? We take away all that pressure to make perfect, that perfect first mark, right? By having, just covering it up. Let's just get the white out of the way. And as you saw when I showed the sample image, we want to have that vibrant color poking through, ooh, poking through in our final piece. And I'm just gonna keep dipping my brush in water and kind of spreading the paint that's already there. I don't need to put on a thick coat. I really just want to cover the white. This is a fun color. It is a fun color. I've done this, I did this project even with just straight red and that, that works too. You don't mm. even have to add white. If you add too much white, you get kind of a lighter pastel -y color, which is fine also, but I recommend kind of keeping it vivid. And as you can see, I'm painting just to the edge of my paper. You're welcome to tape it if you prefer that. Um, I tend to just be a to the edge painter. 
All right, so we're gonna let this dry. I'm actually gonna use our heat tool. But one thing you can do if you want things to dry a little faster and not like take too long is you can kind of take a paper towel and dab on the top to take off any excess like water. Mm, and that'll cool. dry a little bit faster. So I'll go ahead and get our tool, which I should have put closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This is our heated craft tool. I didn't use this before I started working with Let's Make Art, but I really like it. I'm it's a fan handy. now. I usually just have to wait uh, for things to dry. <laughs> this is pretty fancy. I like that it's not very noisy and it's not very big. Mm -hmm. So our next step is gonna be to put the outline in. And this is gonna be dry really fast. Don't worry if it kind of bubbles up or warps a little bit. That's pretty common with paper, when you add water to paper. And I have some tricks for that to flatten it. Actually, I, in um, part six of our acrylic beginner series, I have a little tip in there for how to flatten those papers that get kind of warped. Pro tip. Pro tip. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Awesome. Okay, so now that this is dry, I am going to, I, need, I notice I need to wash my brush out, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my brush board to wipe off some excess paper or paint here. Okay, and then I just rinse it out. This side has ridges, so I like to just kind of go back and forth gently. With acrylic paint, you tend to, it tends to be a little bit harder on our brushes, and so feel free to use multiple brushes. I like to do that when I'm working at home. Um, so I don't have to wash quite as often. Okay, and there we go. All right, so let's take our outline and some tape and a pencil or color pencil. And for this one, I recommend um, centering it. Sometimes I like to start at the bottom, but I think for this one, well, a little, well, you could do it from the bottom. Maybe that is good. Either right at the bottom or slightly up, is what I would say. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tape that. And then I can extend that stem down here in a little bit. But I wanna leave some room at the top, is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Not too much, but some. All right, so I'm gonna tape that right here. It's a little more aesthetically pleasing to leave that space. Is that what you're thinking? I think so, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, graphite paper, it's in the Let's Make Art Matter little envelope if you have the box. We'd like to play hide and seek a little bit. Make yeah. sure you can it's like a have challenge. a challenge to go find it. <laughs> really, it's just making use of the plastic. We don't have so much packaging. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to kind of lay the shiny side down and make sure that I've got it under there. Yep, I think we're good. And then I'm gonna take a colored pencil so I can see where I'm going. And this is, there's quite a few lines on this. Um, as usual, you can follow the pattern and the outline or you can kind of draw it yourself. It's totally up to you. That'd be fun. All right, so I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna start making these little petals. One really cool thing, um, I'm from Kansas and every fall, like late, late summer, early fall, all of these wild sunflowers start to pop up. And like whether you're driving along the highway, I live kind of close to like the city edges where I'm at. And so I don't have to go very far to see really nice views of mm. gr tall grasses and um, the wetlands. Yes. And so, um, yeah, when you're driving around, there's just wild sunflowers everywhere. And oh, I love them. Cool. Yeah, like um, I also, have been a professional photographer for um, several years and I've taken many photos at the wetlands and we've enjoyed having those sunflowers and um, they're just so cheery. I like yeah. it. Sunflowers are, there's a, I've only really, I haven't actually been to it, but I've only known of one space near here that is a sunflower farm. Oh yeah. That you can go visit and, and it's, my sister's had some pictures taken there too. Yes. And it's just so fun and happy and bright. You know? I love them. They they are. And really, like, yeah, we have one kind of close to where I live, too, where you can go and um, they allow you to come and take pictures and stuff. And it's just this massive, I'm going to go ahead and extend that line, by the way. It's just this massive field. It's great. That's cool. And, you know, those sunflowers, you know, there, did you know that there's like a ton of different varieties of sunflowers? 
I did like not. Like a ton. The ones that we're probably most familiar with when you go to a sunflower field yeah. are kind of like the large headed ones, you know, that really have the um, petals that kind of stick out from the edges. Does that make sense? Like straightforward yeah. kind of. Yeah. Um, but there are so many different other kinds. And like these wild sunflowers, they grow multiple blooms to a stem. And the stems are kind of a little bit wonkier, oh. actually. Um, but I think it's fun. One time we fun. actually... One time when my husband were, when I were first married, we grew a couple like giant sunflowers. We had planted those. Like, you know, you're excited, you have your first place and you're trying to do some fun stuff. We planted some giant sunflowers and they were really big, really good. They got about as tall as our one story house. Holy cow. Yeah. Well, maybe not to the roof, but you know. No, now I'm picturing enormous, I'm picturing <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk sized sunflowers. I'll just let you they, go with that. <laughs> Let's just you. run with that. <laughs> I don't want to crush any dreams today. <laughs> today. Today. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the color pencil is definitely helping me to uh, know where I've been and where I'm going, right? Yeah, I just, you know, living in the Midwest, you can see the horizon, like, for days, you know? Yes. We, don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of hills, but some people, you know what? Some people think that, the, that Kansas is completely flat and boring. <laughs> it's not, it's beautiful. And really, and part of the reason why I created this Kansas Wetlands Box is because it's this idea that there's beauty everywhere no matter where we are. And how when we take, when we actually like think about that and we look around and we seek out that beauty, we really do appreciate our world a little more. And I think it makes us happier. I like that a lot. Yeah. Cause I've also uh, thought of Kansas in less of a positive light for years. <laughs> oh, that's right. You, we're in Missouri right now. Uh-huh. You know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So got our outline transferred. And I didn't talk about this, but you don't have to push very hard. But if you do push hard, that's okay, too. Like, it's, we're going to cover up most of that. All right. So got our outline. The next step is to start our blooms and stems. And I'm going to go ahead and... I don't really, it doesn't bother me the warping because I know I'll fix it later by spraying the back and then putting it under something flat. Um, but you can bend it too if you want. All right, so I'm going to use my half inch flat wash brush and I'm going to take, we're going to start with the petals. And so we're going to use yellow. So this is Hansa Yellow Light and we're going to use a little bit of red, a little bit of white, and then kind of a surprise color, green. For the petals? For the petals. Wow. I know. <laughs> it's kind of cool. This is a cool green. Yellow Hansa, Hansa Light. Am I saying it right? Yellow Light Hansa. It's a cooler green. A cooler, cooler yellow. Excuse me. Okay. Yellow can kind of lean warm or cool. Most colors actually can lean one way or the other. It's all relative, right? Um, but this one's cooler. So when I actually put the green in there, because what happens is when I mix the red with it, it and a little bit of white, you'll see it turns in kind of a creamy color. And so if I use the red or the green to kind of balance out that red, I get a nice golden, like a deep golden, Ooh. like ochre color almost. All right, I'm gonna add a little more red here. And you can set up your palette however you want. Um, I tend to keep my warm colors together and my cool colors together. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my half inch brush and I'm gonna kind of just get a little bit wet here, dab off the extra. And then I'm gonna pick up my yellow and make a pile here. And then I'm going to add a little touch of red. You know, I was trying to figure out in the directions how to indicate the size of how much paint, the amount of paint to use. And I keep coming back to touch. So touch. a touch of paint. All right, so I'm gonna add that, and then I'm going to add a little bit of white because I want it to be opaque, meaning you can't see through it. So I'm mm. gonna add a little bit of white because a lot of times pure colors tend to be slightly transparent, mm. unless they have a, like a base of white in there already. All right, so see how that's kind of a, um, a yellow, but I want it to be a little more gold. So I'm gonna add a teeny tiny bit, see that just on the corner, a teeny tiny bit of green and a little more red. That's a little bit, a lot of red, but we're getting there. So I want the base of our 
our blooms to be a nice deep color. So we're all about that. I don't want to start too vibrant or too light. I want to have a place to go. Okay. So yeah, play with it until you feel like you like what you got there. And does that kind of help with the depth of these? It does. Cool. Be careful with that green. All right. So, okay, here we go. See that all of a sudden now we've got kind of a nice golden, like a yellow ochre type color. Okay. See that? Yeah. So with some, a, a balance of the yellow and the red, a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of green, we can achieve that. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, if you get gloppiness on your paintbrush, don't worry, just kind of dab it off or take a paper towel and kind of sandwich it in between and just pull any excess paint off. So that way you can kind of have your tapered end of your brush still working. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. Not a lot, because I wanna have some coverage. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this, this um, bloom up here, and I'm gonna start from the inside and pull out. So I'm gonna tip, tap here and then just pull out and then slightly lift up my brush. So making a petal shape. Cool. And don't worry too much because this is a very forgiving project when we're gonna do a lot of layers. And so don't worry too much. I think the main thing is probably to go ahead and cover up the like graphite. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna get a tiny bit more water. I feel like flowers are a really good project to do for repetition's sake. Yes. You know, especially for if, if it's like your first time. I'm just gonna pull from the outside and go in. And you're doing different types of strokes with this brush that you've never held. Mm -hmm. This would be a great, the petals would be a great way to get your practice in. Absolutely, I like that. Like, as you can see, there's lots of petals. So yeah, you're gonna keep making that same shape over and over again. And then when you come back and add more layers, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you are right. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and mix more paint. These are smaller tubes, but they actually have quite a bit of paint in them. So don't feel too shy about using them. Okay, so again, we're gonna add some yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and add quite a bit here, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of red, okay? And then just a touch of green to kind of bring it into more of a neutral, like a pretty gold, gold. I always, I always love seeing how many colors it, you can mix to get the color you're looking for. Yeah. Because it's when you threw that curveball. The green, that shocked me. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, Kanan. Thank you. To shock you. The shock factor. Yes. Okay. So I actually, you know, if you want to pull from the outside in, you can. Um, later, we'll want to pull from the middle because um, we want to have a nice, crisp little corner as we come over the center that we'll paint. Yes. Have you painted sunflowers before, Keenan? I have not. You have not. Awesome. I knew I wanted to do a sunflower project. We're doing kind of a Kansas theme box. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And it's a good box. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, I, I actually drive by the wetlands almost any time I leave my house. And so it's kind of nice to, to really look and see. It's just very calm. It's very flat, actually. Very flat and Kansas peaceful. Flat. Well, we talked about that, right? <laughs> remember, this is just a base layer, so don't worry too much about um, being perfect. In fact, I can go a little faster. I just want to kind of get the basic idea of a shape in there, and get kind of some a base cover on my blooms down here. So this one obviously is like a closed bloom. We'll talk about that more as we go. You can go ahead and add a second little layer. See how much of a difference that made? Once it dries and we go back and add another layer, we'll, it'll be- Even more? Even more, yes. And the cool thing is like, we don't have to worry too much about the, the um, outline of our shapes because with a cutting in technique that we're gonna learn, we get to make it what we want. Cool. Yeah, it's nice. And then we have some little baby blooms over here and I just wanna, I just wanna kind of touch them and give them some color. Okay, same over here. So it's nice then that you drive by the wetlands for inspiration's sake. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's handy. It's very peaceful. Yeah. 
and where I'm where I'm from, like they, there's some special special significance, um, especially to our Native American population, and um, it's just neat. It's, That's cool. It's got a, a cool vibe to it. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and while even if it's wet, I'm gonna still come back in here and add another coat. Okay, and see how that starts to cover even more of our lines there. I love flowers. I, I paint the flowers a lot. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I actually really love, I really love the, the outline on that background. Yeah, in oh, and that's of right. itself, like I so I I love a sketch look. You're a line person. I'm a line right person. That. I love it so much. Nice. I'm gonna store that in the back of my mind. Yes. <laughs> There's ever an instance where I'm like, I know what Keenan needs. Yeah. He needs it, some lines. Almost any time there's an unfinished or a project that someone doesn't love, it, that's my favorite. Like if they get to the point where they're, where they're just getting the outline done or just making the outline and they think, mm, this isn't what I want, that's my favorite stage. Nice. I just love that stage. Really? Every, yeah, every time. That's interesting because like most artists, that's the part where they're like, <sighs> like they're blocked. Maybe like I get blocked and I'm like, right. well, where do I go next? Or... I really like it right now. I know it's not done, but I don't want to ruin it. Right. So what do I do? Yeah. But that's cool. You appreciate yeah, that. I do. I love it so much. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop there with our first coats of the blooms. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take this little bamboo skewer here and I'm going to use the pointed edge. And I'm just going to kind of come in here and, and draw some little petal shapes. Now, oh, I don't cool. want to completely outline this because that might look, that, that's not quite the painterly style that, uh, that we're going for, but I want to give it a little bit of shape, okay? So I'm not going to come out here and do like the exact outline. I just want to have some little touches of that pink popping through. I'm going to do the same here. And we'll cover a lot of this up too, so don't worry. If you do kind of enjoy it and add some extra, it's all good. And then down here, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Add some little scratches. It's actually called, do you remember what it's called? This technique, scratching in? It's in my head. I always quiz Keenan, I feel bad. I know, it, I know it's a special word. It is a special word. It starts with an S. I, okay, that, I was gonna ask if it was an F or an S. So it's an S. <laughs> Sc Scrafito. You got it! I knew you were gonna get yes, it. Yes, thank you. I knew it. Yes. That's one of key, key, the, the things where Keenan kind of oohs and awes the most when I, I first do. started doing that. I do. I love cool. it so much. And it has a cool name. It does have a cool name. Scrafite. Are you kidding me? Scrafite. That's nice. And, and honestly, with the heavy body paint, like, that's one of the nice things, too. Like, I can, as I get thicker with my layers, I can go in there and just add so yeah. much. I, I think it's nice. I do, too. Yes. Okay, so I'm washing out my brush. And what we're going to do next is we're going to do our... Um, stems okay so and for the stems the base layer we want to have a nice dark um, base so what we're going to do to make that is we're going to use a oh one of my favorite ways to make a green is going to be using some black what some yellow and then some of our phthalo green here what so i think i have enough green i'm gonna add a little more yellow and some black to our palette. Can you see that if I put it over there? Yes. Make sure. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my green and I'm going to make a little pile over here. Okay, and this is, so phthalo green is beautiful. And it's a cool name. It's very vibrant. So I definitely wanna kind of control that a little bit by one, adding some black, that'll help desaturate it. Mm. And adding some yellow, which I don't mind kind of picking up what's there. That's very bright still for me. I want something even a little bit more dark for these initial wow. base layers because we want to be able to build on top of it. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I actually kind of like that. And it's not, see if you kind of thin it out, you can see it's not quite as dark as it, as it appears. Add some water. So I, when I'm going to do these stems, I want to be able to have kind of a fine point on my brush so that I can get a little more detail. Now, we're not going to be finicky because we know we've got that background layer coming up where we're going to cut in and kind of 
um, reshape anything that we want to reshape. So we're good to go. I am going to kind of squeeze off some of the excess there. All right, ready for this? Ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the base of my blooms and I'm just going to kind of hold the brush straight up and down and just kind of tap here. Okay, tap and pull. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about like the thickness just yet. I do want some substance to it, as you can see kind of in our, um, here's our sample image. There is some thickness, so don't be afraid to kind of add a little bit. Now, like the traditional sunflower stems are super thick. Have you ever looked at those? No, I have They're not. They're really thick. I'm realizing that I'm sunflower illiterate. <laughs> is that the right word? I'm un sure. uneducated about sunflowers. Uh, it's okay. Thank it's all you. Good. That's what I'm here for. I'm glad I have um, space. Yeah, actually in college I worked for a flower shop, so oh. I got to kind of cut, when the new flowers would come in, you cut them and put them in water, because a fresh cut is good for flowers. And um, sunflowers have really thick stems, but wild sunflowers do not have such thick, thick stems. Oh, they really? are a little more thin and there's several blooms, like I said, on the, um, on the one stem. So here you can see like with this little one, I went ahead and added kind of a few little strokes to indicate that it's kind of a closed bud there. And I'll do the same thing over here. And really I'm just kind of, kind of just dabbing it. And I know that this is really a base layer and I'm going to be coming back and adding a lot more. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Now as with, with most flowers, like as you get down closer to the, the main part of the stem, it's going to get thicker and then it gets thinner as it comes towards the, the bloom. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I think, do I have all my stems? Yes. And so now I'm going to go through, I'm going to do some of these leaves. And with these leaves, that kind of has a little part that comes out first. Like the leaf doesn't start right up against the stem. It has a little lead and then has the shape. Okay. And I kind of like having that little wonky edge. What I do want to do though is take my bamboo scoop, uh, scrape skewer. I was trying to say scraper and skewer at the same time. I was saying skewer or something. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't coming out right. And I'm just going to kind of scratch in a little bit. Listen, we're here to create. That means art, <laughs> words, <laughs> snacks, everything we can come up with. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to come through. I'm going to kind of add some more of these details here with the leaves. And don't worry if you're like having trouble getting kind of a thin line, add a little bit more water, a little bit more paint, um, taper your brush by kind of pulling off any of, that, any of the paint that's kind of getting up here. You can see right there, I've got a big glob on my ferrule. I can work with that, but feel free to wipe that off. And then just kind of following the outline and making this kind of nice. This is kind of going to be our bigger leaf over here. The leaves your, get kind of bigger towards the bottom. One of your other cleaning suggestions made me think of doing art with kids, where you said uh, you can kind of squeeze the, the brush off with a paper towel. Yeah. Um, doing kid projects with kids, I've seen some of them just take the excess with their hands. Oh. And so they just squeeze that brush, no napkin, and they just get filthy. <laughs> That's funny. It's, it's so It's like funny. they know it needs to be squeezed. <laughs> yeah, they do. Or they, they know can... it needs to be off. Yes, they can tell. That's funny. My littlest still eats with his hands a lot, and I'm like, I have a fork for you. Or, or else like a napkin. Here's a napkin. <laughs> Wait, is eating with your hands not okay? It depends on the food, Keenan. Oh. I think some food is acceptable, right? Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay to what do that. What kind of eggs? Ooh, scrambled. I mean, hard-boiled egg, yes, for sure. I do love hard-boiled <laughs> eggs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so, and then I'm just going to kind of come and add a few little touches of leaves, knowing that, again, I'm going to be, we're going to be fixing and shaping our leaves a little, a little bit, in a little bit here. I do want this one. So what I'm doing is I'm um, starting here, and I'm pushing and then pulling it, okay? Mm. And you can start at the end of your leaf or you can start kind of at the edge here up against the stem it's up to you okay i'm um, really it's just kind of the idea of a leaf shape so don't fret one thing i do know about sunflowers are their seeds are delicious you know i'm a fan i'm a big fan i don't know how they get dill flavored sunflowers but i love it <laughs> special seeds <laughs> i think for those right yes <laughs> that's funny I think like base, right, some flower seeds remind me of like baseball season or um, oh, yeah. long car trips, you know, where you yep. just, 
speaking of flat, Kansas flat, if I'm mm. driving to Colorado, oh, dear. you get to Western Kansas is very flat. Yes. And so you get to Western Kansas and you're like, so bored. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I need some stuff other seats. <laughs> I need something to do. <laughs> now, there's beauty in that also. Agreed. Right? So oh, I'm not oh, trying to I knock agree. anything. But nope. I definitely some associate sunflower seeds with long car trips. Yes. So I do want to keep scratching in so that I can get some of that pink background to show through. And this one's already dry, but there's a trick. You can add a little more paint to kind of get it a little bit wet again. And then you can try and scratch in. See? Nice. Isn't that cool? I love the, I love the look of scratching in. I, I think too. it just helps it look so much more painterly. I love that word too. Painterly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's different styles, you know, like there's um, illustrative, which would be kind of not painterly. It would be a little more like um, clean edges. And um, I love that style too. And some people do it really, really well. Um, Sarah being one of them too. Although she has a painterly style also. Mm -hmm. She can do anything, that's Sarah. <laughs> that's Sarah, <laughs> down her. That's Sarah, no, <laughs> I like it, love it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, I do, you know, one thing I do like about the painterly style is I feel like it takes pressure off. Cause I can paint, I can paint like a little more exact and mm -hmm. you know, like photorealistically, but I, that's not really what's calling to me. Okay, so see we have our base layer of our dark stems and we're gonna go ahead and leave it like that. But what we are gonna do, check this out. We're gonna take this green that we have here and I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it in order to make our centers. Oh. See that? Yeah. I don't know if that shows very well, but yeah, you see how it kind of, um, the, adding the red to the green neutralizes the green yeah. and makes it into a brown. Do you, so red and green are opposite colors. Is that? That is why. Are they complementary? Yeah, so opposite, meaning they're complementary on the color wheels. So they're opposite to each other, they're complementary colors. You can tone down yeah. um, green with red, you can tone down red with green. Usually when you mix the two together, you can get a uh, nice neutral also. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow to this. So I'm going for somewhat of a warm neutralist brown. Okay, I like that. And again, this is a base layer, so I know I'm gonna come back. So with the with adding the center, I'm gonna try and be loose with it, right? Because when you look at a sunflower, you don't see a big circle necessarily. On the traditional ones you might, but you see like where the little petals cut in, kind of here where the petals cut into the center. Because you'll see like the little mm -hmm. edges kind of going in there. So that's what we wanna kind of embrace. And then also, I wanna leave some little pops of pink there. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of tap. So I'm not really thinking of making like a circle. I just wanna have a shape there that shows that it has a center, but also indicates, now there I'm getting a little wild, but I know we're coming back, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, that indicates that there's a center there, but also the petals. And this one's fairly close, so that's just gonna be kind of more of like a line. Yeah. And I'm doing it kind of painterly, like, kind of a, um, letting those feathered edges of the dryer brush show through. I will fix that, don't worry. That no, I'm you. not worried, I think. <laughs> done. Well done, you've not done worried. it. Not worried, I know you're not worried. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off on my brush board here, and I can even add a little bit of water to kind of get off a little more of that paint. Okay, brush boards can be beautiful. I've seen some really pretty ones, like I was saying. All right. So this is, the nice thing about acrylic is it dries pretty quickly. And so we can keep moving on. Since we worked on the stems, the blooms are dry again. Um, and I think the stems are pretty dry. And once they are dry at this stage, we can start cutting in our background. Great. One of the things that I was inspired by with this piece is when you look at a blue sky with a sunflower, so there's a sunflower with a blue sky in the background. So that's why I chose blue for the background of this and they blue and yellow go really well together. So, did you know that? You know? I did not know that. I mean, I like blue and yellow together. Yeah. I didn't know where the inspiration came from, yeah. so that's great too. Yeah, well, that would be cool. I'm learning so many things today. But I still wanted to keep it simple like a botanical without having like a, a lot busy background. Yeah the sunflowers are the star. All right, I'm gonna bend this a little bit. So we're gonna mix a desaturated blue 
And to do that, I'm gonna take my blue here, this is ultramarine blue, and put it on my palette. We'll go ahead and put it over here. So you can see it, I'm gonna need quite a bit. So we're gonna try and fill this background up. And this is our first layer of the background, so we're not gonna to be too like picky about it. We just wanna kind of get something there. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it. Oh, you know, I've already got yellow up there, so I'm gonna keep that there. And I've got some black. Do I have black? Yes. All right, so we're gonna take some blue here, okay? And then we're going to add a little bit of yellow. So this is a, a kind of a, a cooler or a warmer blue, leans more purple, the ultramarine does, and so, as opposed to green. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow to kind of bring it into the green a little more. Because mm. I don't want it to be so vibrant necessarily. And then I'm gonna add some white. And once I add the white, you'll be able to see more of like what the color is looking like. Okay. So that ah. kind of, yeah, tints it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black because I like to use black to desaturate. So I, want, I don't want too vibrant of a color right now. Okay, so I like that color, kind of like a country blue or mm. cornflower blue. And then I'll add a little more white. I'm not familiar with cornflower. No, <laughs> I might have just made that up. I like it. It's funny, you get in front of a camera and it's like, like, uh, <laughs> wait, is that what I just said? Is that legit? Or did I kind of make something up? All right, I'm gonna add plenty of water to this because I, and I might have to make some more here in a minute, but I want it to go far. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, keeping in mind that I want to leave these pops of pink showing through for the final project, I'm going to be somewhat loose in my background. Like I don't want to feel like I'm coloring in. I want to just feel like I'm kind of adding a little bit of color back there, mm, if that makes sense. That does make sense. So if you want to switch to your round brush for these more intricate details in the middle, feel free. Um, I'm kind of okay using this brush because I'm okay with like the, um, the painterly style, the not exactness, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I like All right, that too. so we're gonna come in and we are going to kind of just start cutting in. Now, if I don't like a certain, like if I think, oh, it's too thick there, I'm just gonna kind of thin out that stem. And remember though, we do have more layers coming. So if I go over something like that, like I'm not gonna worry too much. I can wipe it off if I want to, but for the most part, um, it's all good. Actually, I can tell this is already a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add a little more white and then keep going. There we go. Mm. And don't worry about that, we'll, we'll fill that in later. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda keep cutting in around here. Let me show you how it is with the round brush. You can see if that is a better option. I kinda like to live on the edge though, Keenan, so at home yes, I, good. I totally like to. <laughs> that run, that runs in the Let's Make Art family. Yes. Living on the edge. It's like just the wind in your hair, just letting loose. So what I am going to do is I am going to um, kind of come in with some water there. I'm going to kind of come in here and kind of taper that leaf just a little bit at the edge. So like the nice thing about this method is that I can really shape it how I want it and kind of make some of those like cool shapes stand out as opposed to kind of like a mass of paint. If that makes sense. Yeah. And this can be somewhat like dry brush, you don't have to go too heavy on the paint. Man, that looks so cool. Yeah. Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this, um, I'm gonna use the round brush for kind of this, this center section, but then I will switch to my uh, flat brush because I feel like it adds some nice kind of more geometric shapes, which are kind of cool. And I can cut in too to like kind of show that there's like air in between the petals. And it looks, it might kind of look wonky and like, ugh, like that's kind of weird looking, but trust me, trust. It's gonna look great. Here I'm gonna take an opportunity to thin out right there. Add a little bit of blue back in there. And then kind of shape this leaf. I wouldn't consider it looking wonky. No? No. Well, thanks. It makes me think of, this is gonna be weird, what it makes me think thanks of. Thanks for the warning. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, I, watch, I watched 
for a long time, 3D printing videos, because I had a 3D printer for a while. Uh -huh. And one person would program his 3D printer after every single layer of the project to go what's called home. And he would take a picture and he turned it into a time lapse to where it looks like the 3D printer doesn't move, but the project is gradually growing. Huh. And that's what this is making me think of, where the background is going from the middle, moving outward, and you can change, like you're saying, you can mm -hmm. adjust the size of the stem, yeah. and do those things. And so it's slowly, if we could turn this into a time lapse, it would be so cool to watch this just do grow. It. Okay. Do it. We can do, do that. <laughs> that's cool. It's interesting to hear your perspective on that. Yeah, and it just, it's so neat to watch it. I do like this method because like sometimes we think, okay, we have to have the background first and then we paint ourselves on top, but what if we don't like it that great? What do we do? We're, we're stuck. No, you can actually go in and paint um, over the background, add some more something, but, um, but you can leave parts of the background still showing through, which I love. I love the dimension that it adds. I really do. Yeah. I love the little bright pops of pink. Um, if you did the if you did the acrylic Starbucks, you might have done the landscape, which we did a gold background, and that yeah. was cool because it would show it showed through on the blue sky, mm -hmm. um, which is really pretty. Okay, so that's the most intricate part of this. I might come up here and just do this too. Get a little more water. And then I'm just kind of decide, okay, how do I want to shape these petals? Knowing I'm coming back and I'm going to add more paint, this is a good time to kind of trim your flower down a little bit if it's starting to get kind of a little bit big and circular as opposed to showing that it has actual petals. And again, I don't want to be perfect. I just um, want it to look cool. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. I actually yeah. think that's kind of nice. Mission, and, I'll, and I know I'm going to come back and add. So I know having a little bit of air, kind of or like sky, as we're kind of thinking about this, showing through is going to be nice at the end. I need more paint. This is also a time when you can go through and scratch into the background if you wanted to. I actually think I have enough pink showing through that I'm not going to do that this time around. But just know that is always an option. Okay. And here. We do our final layer. We will. Um, come back again to do the background, and but we'll do kind of a dark to light transition. Kind of fun. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my flat brush. And mine was getting kind of gloppy, which is part of why I switched to the uh, round. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my little trick where I, I basically kind of make connection with this little metal part and then I just straightforward. I don't have to squeeze all the paint off, but enough to kind of get, just get it tapered, it's great. Would you be willing to show us that one more time? Sure. More over the painting? Yes, I can do be, that. That would be most excellent. It's not gloppy anymore, but we'll pretend okay, it is. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> pretend. So I try to kind of pinch right here. Okay. So, so you can't see it because my fingers are there, but I pinch there and then just pull straight out. I don't have to squeeze all the paint out. I just want to kind of make it even. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna load my brush again and I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna kind of work on the, the background here. See how the flat brush is just great for coverage, man. Yeah, it yeah. just throws it on there. <laughs> yeah. And I even like some of the like squarish type shapes I get. I'm totally fine leaving some of this dry brush texture, this brush airy kind of look there. Dry brush for and then, the win. Yeah. And then this, I don't want it to look perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to on purpose kind of like wiggle my brush a little to kind of you know, make it look a little more organic. Mm. Okay. All right. So filling in here. What are you thinking? Are you going to start adding pink to your background layers? Yes. 
It's definitely not a color I would have expected. No. To do, yeah. No. Yeah. And I'm I gonna... actually thought it was that you went through and did little highlight pieces. I mean, you could. It just I found it just doesn't. It isn't quite the same. You know, I've tried to add it afterward. Interesting. And if you don't like like this much showing, like you can totally cover most of it. I recommend leaving some though. And if you didn't want to do the pink background at all, you could just either not paint your background um, or um, just go ahead and start with blue. Okay, and like this is a great time to kind of make your leaves pointy at the tip if you want. Thin out like the neck of that, that stem there. Um, same here, like where the little connects right there. I don't want it to be too thick. Same with like right here. And don't worry, we're coming back with some more color, so it is okay to kind of have a little break on that. Okay, I'm gonna kind of finish out the bottom part of this background, and then I'm gonna start adding a little bit of white as we go to the top. Hmm. I did several var variations of this painting and um, was adding some, making kind of, trying out like different values if we want to do like a lighter background or um, more gray. So those, this is some options too. You can kind of, if you have a lighter background, you can kind of make it kind of have a softer feel, mm. which is also nice. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little more of this color. So I had some blue and I had some um, yellow and then I'm going to mix in a little bit of white and black, it's like a dab of black. To me, that looks a little gray, a tiny bit more blue. And now that I'm doing the top part, I'm gonna add a, a bit more white so I can have kind of some um, lighter values up there. Add water. Um, with the heavy body paint, you will find that you add a little bit more water than you might with kind of some of the softer body options out there. It's all good. So that's a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to kind of roll with it and lightly kind of add that on. So you... And I'm going to kind of pull down too to kind of introduce a, this into and integrate it into the darker color. That's what I was going to ask. Is that what you're going to ask? Yeah, because I was going to ask, <laughs> you added a little bit of white in order for it to be lighter, but then do you want a hard transition or do you want to blend it? Uh, I like to blend it in general. Okay. But I actually kind of I like, to me that's like plenty blended. Like I don't oh, okay. need to, it doesn't need to like be like a perfect gotcha. transition. Now if you want that, you definitely can. Add a little bit more water and maybe um, not as much white right at that point. I know I don't want too much pink, so I do want to kind of, obviously that's too much, so I'm going to go over here. And maybe add a little air in there also. And again, this if this is kind of feels scary to you, just kind of roll with it and um, know that we're adding more layers, and so you're going to be able to shape it into what you want it to be. Still plenty of time. Add a little bit of this light color down here to kind of connect it all. And there we have our background. Nice. 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 Okay. Go ahead and wash this off here. So our next step is to add some more layers to our blooms and stems to help create some more like dimension and shadow. Um, to make them look a little bit more developed. How does that sound? It sounds great. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some warm, like rich reddish tones to the, to, uh, to the flowers now. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna make a warm yellow orange by mixing some red with some yellow. I'm gonna get some new yellow because that already has some blue on it and I don't wanna contaminate. So I'll just use that when I mix greens. So I'll have another yellow powder here. 
my warms. And I'm gonna bring that over, I'm gonna mix that together. Now red is a very strong tinting color, and so you'll notice that you're probably gonna need more yellow than red. Mm. And I probably need quite a bit more. All right, so what happens when I add a tiny bit of white, as I was kind of talking about earlier, earlier is it kind of makes a pastel, um, pastel-y orange, which is not what I want. I want it to be a little more of a golden, warm um, yellow. And so once again, we can add a tiny bit of green. I'm gonna be go, not go crazy here. See how that neutralized it? And I don't love that color, we need more yellow, but it neutralized a lot of that orange. Mm -hmm. And so when I go in and I add this yellow, I have that nice oh. ochre color, but this is a little warmer, okay? So very similar to how we mixed our base color, but then a little bit warmer. I like so that. You can see the difference there. That's a oh, more yellow and this is more orange. Yeah. All right, once again, got our gloppiness going on here. Okay. With this project, we, oh, you know, I'm gonna wash out this brush, okay. With this project, we are doing a few more of the finer details. And so you do want to have a, um, you do want to get the glop off your brush so you can have more control of your uh, brush strokes. All right, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a few places where I want to add um, add these colors. And really I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to kind of make this kind of the shadow side. So I'm going to kind of come over here and add this in here. Mm, so you're choosing which side you want. Yes, I am the artist. Yes, you and are. I get to decide, right? Right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just thinking like, okay, let me, let me pick where the light might be coming from. I'm gonna kind of imagine it coming from this side. Okay. And then, so like this side might, might be in shadow. And then you might still have some shadow kind of on this other side, because, depending on how like the bloom is um, curved. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay. Thank you. So I'm gonna add a few more over here. And let's see. And then I know like this is closed, so you're gonna have your darker parts kind of in the middle there, kind of around that. Um, and then maybe underneath too. So I'm gonna add that in there. And again, this is a middle layer. We've got a lot more to come. So we're not gonna worry too much, but I am gonna kind of make it a little darker towards the bottom here. Since it's closed, might have a little shadow on it. And I'm gonna call that good for that layer, okay? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to brighten this up a little bit so I can add a few more blooms, like a few more uh, petals and some more vibrant colors. So I'm gonna add some yellow. Look at that. That to me is like a sunflower color. That is a bright, good yellow. Yes. <laughs> Use the edge of this to help me out here. All right. So adding a little more water to make sure it's fluid. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna test this real quick because I'm not sure. I think I want it more yellow even. Yes, there we go. There we go. So this is kind of gonna be your like um, medium, value mm. medium hue of your yellow. So like kind of like your main color, if you will, of your petals. So I'm gonna come through and I'm just gonna kind of add a layer. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and so I'm starting from the out side edge, but I meant to start from the inside to give it kind of a nice, and if it, if your yellow gets over your um, center, which it will, it will look a little bit green at first, but don't worry, we're gonna go over that again. Lots more layers to come. Okay, and then I'm still gonna kind of go over this, but I'm gonna bring out my bamboo skewer and I'm gonna kind of scratch in there. Yes, scratch. So I can still see, um, what's underneath. Okay, you like that? That's great. Okay, and we're gonna come back with another layer here in a minute, even more uh, vibrant, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the same color on the other blooms. Let's see, oh yeah, I can start from the center. If I start, so if I start from the center with a properly loaded brush, meaning I have like the paint towards the um, toe or end mm. of the brush, I can really get a nice, little, um, what do you call that? Like a tip, mm -hmm. like a, a point, point. 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 It's a ballet term. Is it? Okay. Nice. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Point. That you, yeah. Did you do ballet? No. 
I did. Nope. I did for a very short period of time. Wow, fun. Well, like, um, it was like a tap jazz ballet type Ooh, of class. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah. Tap always makes me think of... Scratch in there. Musicals. Oh, yeah? Yes. Like Shirley Temple or... <gasps> Oh, I used to want to marry Shirley Temple. Wow. Yeah, when I was a kid, I told my oh. mom, I said, I'm going to marry Shirley Temple. You know, it's not, that's not too bad. That's not I, too bad. Take I had thing. no idea how old she was. <laughs> not funny. Yeah, yeah, you watch your shows that you, yeah. like, that's what I, how I feel when I, if I watch Friends and then I see them in real life, I'm like, whoa. Whoa, what? Like when they did the reunion. I'm yeah. like, oh my goodness, what happened? <laughs> Joey's not that old. How can that be? If you Uncle, watch Friends, you might know what we're talking about. Uncle Joey. Um, again, I'm going to scratch in here. And I'm just going to kind of take some liberty to make that point at the top. You know, the scratching in kind of helps, too, to make to make the shape of the petals without having to add an extra line or an outline or something like that. And without having to worry too much about, like, the exact um, shapes or forms of, of the, each petal. You kind of get the idea. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of do the same thing with... Our little buds. And I am not going to worry about that. But I can wipe it a little if I want to. There we go. And then scratch in. We're pretty much going to scratch in after every layer. Perfect. Just kind of, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. Yay. So I, I'm liking the color that we're having for our petals. It's starting to look more of that golden yellow that we associate with sunflowers, although there are sunflowers that are red. Have you seen those? I have not. They are pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add, though. I want to add a few more strokes in there, so I'm going to add a little more yellow to my pile, and then I'm going to add some white, which I need some new white. Mine's contaminated. I'll use it for something else, though. Add a little bit of white. Ah, beautiful. That's nice. Okay. Again, you want to kind of smash off some of that excess paint, add some water, make sure it's kind of a nice glide, but you don't want it too watery because we are trying to get some good coverage here. Um, in fact, I'm going to add a tiny bit more yellow. And yes, that is what I like. Um, here we go. Let's test it out here. Oh, yes, I like that. Nice. Okay. Although, yeah. We are, so I do want to leave, leave room for like adding some highlights later. So I just want to kind of add this to a few places and see how I'm kind of leaving this side to be kind of my darker mm -hmm. um, shadowy area. I'm not going to touch that too much with this lighter color. I'm going to kind of leave that. And then I kind of like lightly kind of brushed it over. I'm okay if I get that drag I was talking about before. On, on some of these, because I, I like how that looks and it shows some of that background, some of those other colors that we put in there. Okay, so come over here, and I know that these are in front, these petals, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in, and then I know I want some kind of shadow back there, so I'm gonna kind of just do the tips a little here. And maybe one side, the sun is shining on it. Okay, and same over here, just kind of pull in. This would be a good time to um, think about what you want the outside of your um, petals to look like. If you want to kind of make the tip a little bit more um, full, I guess you could say. Okay, and then we don't have to ignore that. We can put a little over there and then scratch in. Okay. Actually, when I did an art show, like last year, m one of my most popular pieces which I made prints of was a sunflower. Really? Or a few sunflowers. Yeah, a sunflower painting. And I did a bright blue background. That's actually where the inspiration for this particular, um, besides the wetlands, mm -hmm. it was, yeah, I did the sunflowers and I thought, you know what, that would be really good to do a sunflower. Yeah, that's cool. And of course, I'm from Kansas, so. Mm, of course. It didn't make sense. And you love <laughs> sunflower seeds. I do. <laughs> yeah. I kind of just, I kind of just like the regular ones though. Like I'm not. Oh yeah. I, I don't know that I, I've never purposefully tried dill. I've got to be in <laughs> for, a special mood to try flavored sunflower seeds. Yeah. I like, I like the plain. Okay. But salted. 
they oh, need to yes. be salted. I, I don't do the no salt thing. I mean, I get it. But. And you know, while I'm, I'm gonna kind of take a look and say, okay, how do I like the shape of my blooms? Do I want to add anything? And I think I want, I would like this sunflower to kind of, this bloom to have a little more oomph so it stands out from this one. Okay. It's kind of our larger focal flower. So I'm just gonna come in and make this a little longer down here. Mm. Okay, and you can do whatever you want. So that's why we can, it's our painting. We can take the liberty to adjust. Oh, I like that. Okay. And then again, I'll go ahead and yeah, scratch in a bit. Scratch it up. Yes. Okay. So that kind of, that that is finishing step four. And so now I'm going to work on another layer for our stems. Sweet. I can't, I think we might be able to leave this. I'm trying to think if I need to really wash my brush out. I will just so that it's not confusing, but you might be able to just, when I'm painting at home, I tend to keep the paint on my brush if I'm still working in the same like color family or kind of like the um, analogous colors and just kind of add that into the mix oh. sometimes. But I will. For efficiencies? Yeah, or just, you know, maybe it's just impatience. I oh, okay. Maybe. <laughs> like, I don't want to wash my brush out. Yeah. No, I do. Actually, I, I, I love mixing colors at home, and I love, like, um, just going with it and taking that risk and not feeling, like, too worried about um, if it messes up, mm -hmm. you know? I'm just like, go with it. Who cares? If I waste some paint, that's okay. I'm not wasting because I'm learning. Right. Right? Right. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for agreeing with me. Oh, I always. will always agree with you. Yeah, I, I think I found that. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, okay, here's where we're gonna. I'll show you kind of the. Here's the original, right? And then here's the kind of the sample image that mm. that you have. If you have the box, you can see if you look at the um, leaves and the stems that we have some dark colors, okay, some dark greens, we have a medium green, we have a yellow green, and then we have kind of a blue green. So we're gonna add some of those like colors in there um, during this step. So many variations. I know, right? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where to put stuff, Keenan. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and mix another green. And as long as you can see my palette, I'm gonna keep working over here. Let's do, let's start with a gray green. So I'm going to, um, use some yellow, which I'll use this yellow here because it already has like kind of green in it. So that works for me. I'll do some yellow. I can add, oh, we'll see if I need more. Here's my yellow, it has some green in it. I'm gonna add some blue to it, okay. All right, so I've got kind of a nice medium kind of middle green here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of um, white to it for um, it to be opaque. And that's a little pastel for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black. So a little touch of white and a little touch of black. Yes. So cool. I might actually even add um, some blue, more blue in there. Okay. And I got a little bit of a glare here. I'm gonna get more yellow on my palette. Add a little more yellow in there. And probably a little more. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is like a nice um, medium value desaturated green. And I'm just gonna come in this, I'm gonna use this as kind of my, similar to the gold, like for the sunflowers, that's my kind of like um, middle color or main color, right? Because this dark here is gonna be more of the shadow, like the deeper mm -hmm. value. And so once again, we're doing the stem, so I'm gonna kind of want a thinner, tapered edge on my brush. Go ahead and wipe that off and then pick up paint here. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to try and stay loose with this. I don't want to, I don't want to be finicky and like, you know, really go over it because then it ends up having a wonky line anyway. So it's better to just kind of be expressive and, and loose with this. So I'm going to hold my brush handle towards the top as opposed to like right here where I have tons of control. I like the loose. And remember, we're doing it in another background layer, so I don't have to worry too much about staying in the lines. All right, so I'm gonna kind of like dab that on there. Okay, I don't, I wanna leave some of the dark still showing. Okay, so we're gonna kind of skip around here. All right, go ahead and do this one. I am keeping in mind that um, 
right now I'm just focused on the stems, by the way. I am keeping in mind that the stem tends to get thicker towards the base as we go down. So what I do want to kind of think about that. Dab a little on these little um, buds. And then a little on the stem here. Okay. All right, if you want to scratch in at this stage, you can while it's still wet. You can just kind of, I like just kind of little lines. It just breaks up that mass of color. I feel like it adds some nice interest there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do our leaf shapes. Again, I'm okay with it being kind of a drier brush. I'm dabbing some of my paint off. I'll start with this big one here. Okay, see how I left some dark there? Yeah. I am gonna have this part be a little lighter though, because I know like the light, if it's coming that way, this will be lighter. And we'll do this one. We can pretend that this leaf is like in front. Mm. So we can get most of it there. Here we have another leaf. See how I'm kind of just straight going out so I can keep a nice thin line there. And then you can kind of use the flatter part of your brush as you go along here. Okay. And we'll kind of come here and do those. I think one thing too is like to just embrace kind of what happens when you're painting a little bit um, because nature, you know, nature's just like that. We don't see every petal. We don't see every part of every stem, you know. There's highlights and there's shadows and there's overlapping. So it's good to keep, keep that vibe. I'm gonna go ahead and go scratch in here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna kind of scratch in in the shape of these leaves just a little. Or you could kind of scratch in like as like doing veins or something if you wanted to. Just a little touch. And and look how different that looks. Yeah, like we really brightened this up, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Um, thanks, Keenan. Yes, yes, we have. Yes, we have. <laughs> okay, so we've got more to go. We've got more to go. The next step is going to be um, adding a little bit more to our stem. So we're going to use a yellow green. And to make yellow green, we're going to use black and yellow. One of my favorite ways to make green. Cool. I don't think you need to wash off your brush. Um, so don't worry too much about that. I'm just going to take this black that I have here. And I'm going to take some of this yellow that I have here. Watch what happens. I'm just kidding. Now watch what happens. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I need even more. I mean... Remember, black is like such a strong tinting color. See, it's a nice olive green here. Oh. I still want it to be a little more yellow, I think. Okay. So I'm gonna add a little more yellow paint. We use a lot of paint with this box. A lot of yellow paint with this project specifically. Okay, so, oh, I like that. So it's kind of a nice, like, olivey green. Um, I can add a tiny bit of white to that if I want to. I'm trying to see how that shows up. Yeah, I want to add a little bit more yellow. And maybe a touch of white. We'll see. You can always test something out and see how you like it. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. I don't want to go too light yet. All right, I'm going to do the glop trick here. And we good to go. Add a little bit of water to keep it flowing. Can you guys see that? Yeah, like mm -hmm. on the sides, you can see it nice. And you want it to be like a smooth, right? Like a yeah. Not so much drag. Well, actually, though, typically, yes. For this stage, I'm okay with there being some drag because okay. it's giving that dry brush or like um, not completely uniform kind of okay. look. If that makes sense. So depending on the stage, you kind of change it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, depending on like what texture really that you want. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, kind of just pull this color into a few spots. See how nice that just adds like just a little um, like dimension, like variety, you know? Yeah. Not just kind of a solid mass. But I still don't want to cover everything up. So I'm going to purposefully like resist and hold back from covering everything. And that's really it for that one, for that color. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use my brush board here. Look at those nice earthy colors. Yeah, that brush board's like looking it. sweet. <laughs> All right, 
So now we are gonna do a blue-green. We're gonna make a nice blue-green. So we're gonna go for, I'll show you on the original. We're going for um, kinda like this color here, okay? Hmm. Oh wait, where are we going? Actually, I think we might be going, oh, that's a highlight. Yeah, okay, we'll just kind of do whatever we want because nice. we, can, we can do that. Because we can. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm going to use what I have here because honestly, this is how I paint at home. Like, this is for real. I love to just use what I have and like keep going with it. So, if you have some green already mixed, add some blue to it and see what you got. And really, when we use a limited color palette and we're mixing like a little bit of co the same colors into each of our mixes, it really unifies your. Um, piece because they all are somewhat related yeah. all of your mixes all right so I love oh that's actually really pretty I like this um what color is that it's a blue green it makes me think of like teal or like oh a, yeah okay. like a peacock color oh yeah <laughs> speaking your language yeah like okay yeah. and I'm just gonna kind of oh, where do I want to add that maybe like oh yeah like a few little touches um, knowing that I'm coming in again later, so I don't have to worry too much. And I'm going to not do every one, okay? So I'm just going to kind of pick a few select leaves to add this to. Okay, and I'm going to resist the urge to do more than that. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Resistance is I futile. might want a little bit on this stem. How about that? There we go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. This is where you can kind of be like, I'm an artiste, and I am going to pick where I want my colors. And I'm the, you know, I think the main thing about like that artistic mindset is being like, is being okay with um, it not being perfect and saying, I'm just confident. And I know that that's fine. That stroke is fine. It's great. It's not perfect, but like, I love it. Well, I, it is perfect. Cause I agree cause with that. I can just say, I, you know, I can, I can claim that. Yeah. Let's add a little bit of um, white to that and, and, do a couple more little touches. In fact, let's do a dry brush technique on this one. I'm gonna wipe off, there's my brush board. I'm gonna wipe off. Oh yeah, look at that. Interesting how you, the colors mm -hmm. look relative to the other colors that are next to it. Um, so I'm gonna do kind of a dry brush feel and just kind of, ooh, just kind of tap over the places that I already put that um, blue green color. I'm just lightly brushing over that. Can you mm. see that on the side cam? Maybe you can. Yep. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna a little bit. Just little touches. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry now because I don't wanna, you don't wanna mess too much with paint that's starting to dry because it gets a little tacky and then you can kind of get like a weird texture going on. Trust me on that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so these are really starting to take shape and we're gonna add more details here in a minute too to our stems to give a little bit more even dimension. But it's coming along. Okay. Coming right along. Coming right along. Okay, so for the next step, we're gonna make sure that our sunflowers are dry. You know, these aren't quite as dry as I would want them to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out the heat it tool. Go ahead and dry those up. At home, I typically will paint in multiples so that I have if you've painted with me before, you've probably heard me say that. But I uh, have multiples going so that I don't have to wait for drying. And I just oh, kind of move to the next thing. Oh, that's smart. And I honestly, when I'm making something like this, I want to do at least two, maybe three. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, sun. how many times do you think you've painted the sunflowers? <laughs> Gosh, Keenan. <laughs> Well, because I'm kind of a perfectionist and like I want to keep tweaking it. So probably yeah. like maybe a dozen times. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And trying to figure out like, you know, do we want something lighter? Do we want something darker? Do we want something more vivid? Do I want something, you know, what's what composition do I want the flowers to be? Because to be quite honest, if you go and look up like wild sunflowers online, you'll see that it's not always the best composition because they're kind of like, <laughs> the stems are wonky and you have uh, some that are turned this okay, way or some, yeah. some of the blooms are dead or, you know. So we're kind of just making the best of it, nice. you know, and we get to the side. That's one thing I've thought about recently actually is, you know, as an artist, in fact, actually I was looking at the moon last night. Okay, the moon was really cool last night I was, I was, as I was driving. And I was like, you know, it's so hard to capture that moon, like it's so hard to take a picture of it and get it to look exactly as what we're seeing. I'm like, that's why I can appreciate art because we can 
create something the way that we either see it or want to see it or want to remember it. And so I feel like that's cool. I feel like we can create something that maybe even isn't there. Yeah, I like that too. You know, does that make oh, sense? Oh yeah, totally. Is that a little woo woo? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes so woo woo helps us see new things. Yeah, maybe so. All right, Keenan, would you mind um, giving me a fresh water if you don't mind? I do not mind. Okay. Let me grab that for you. That would be you. awesome. And then I'm actually, this is a good time for me to um, turn my palette so I can have a little bit more mixing space. At home, I have multiple palettes going most of the time. So I can just keep on going here. Awesome. Okay. All right, how does that look top down? Is that look okay? Can everybody see everything? Let me double check. I, I got yellow over there, but I'm gonna add a little more here too. Yeah, okay. You won't see me mixing, rinsing out my brush, but that's okay. Yeah. All right, so we are ready to add a little bit more vibrancy even to our blooms. So I'm going to take my half inch flat wash again, and I am going to uh, pick up some yellow. We're more in like kind of the highlights phase here. I'm gonna pick up some yellow and you know that we're gonna use a little bit of white, okay? And a little bit of red, okay? Go easy on the red for this step. Otherwise we'll get kind of that pastel orange. I'm gonna move my pile over this way a little bit. I have that rogue blue spot right there. <laughs> rogue blue. Rogue blue. That's the color of that blue actually, rogue blue. Really? I know, it could be. It could be. It could be a name. Uh, and then just look at your color and be like, okay, well, how do I like that? We, we want to save like the brightest, lightest colors for the very end. So I want to make sure that I'm darker than this color, darker than white. Um, and I still want that nice, beautiful, warm yellow that we can associate with sunflowers. I think that's pretty good. I can compare that there. All right, so I'm going to come through and I'm going to add some more highlights. Ooh, what do you think? I think I want a tiny bit more red actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, yeah. But just okay. a little. Just add a little at a time. There we go. I think that's going to be more what I want. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to come through and add a, pick a few spots to kind of um, add this color. Same kind of down here. Oh, my goodness. If you do that, just you can get either get, use your finger or use a wet paper towel. <laughs> Wipe that up. It happens. Especially when you get a little crazy. You get a little loose, right? It's all good. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of pick some spots here where I feel like maybe the sun is kind of kissing that little spot, mm -hmm. adding a little bit of a highlight. Um, and maybe, maybe over here we have, maybe these, are, maybe these petals are bending. And so like maybe part of them have a little bit of light on them. Ooh, okay. You know? Um, and then, oh, that makes, that's a good idea. I like that. You like that? Yeah. Okay. So I've, I'm gonna come back again with some more vivid colors here in a second, but I like that, that's pretty good. All right, so I, I still want to get like some of these more vivid kind of orange colors. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna to add to this pile. I'm gonna add a little more red, okay? That's a lot, bear with me. That's pretty darn. Uh, red so i'm gonna keep adding yellow i'm gonna try and avoid um white too much white this time around because i don't really want a pastel i want to kind of stay more towards like the vibrant and um pure colors Ooh, but i kind of like that what do you think i like that orange okay i like that orange yep so i'm gonna go through because i feel like right here it's a little dull for me and so i want a little bit more color without going crazy so i'm gonna wipe up wipe off most of the paint and just kind of come in and like touch a few places. You know what, I want a little more yellow in that. I like the orange, but I don't want it to overpower. So let's try that. A lot of art is just problem solving where you try something and either you're like, yes, or you're like, hmm, let me, let me adjust that. Yeah, okay, here we go. I like that and I'm kind of incorporate it over here too. And over here, kind of, this is kind of where I'm putting, kind of similar to where I put some of our shadows in there and then actually you know what maybe i will use some of this color and add a few little touches of vibrance oh there we go that's mm. what it was i think we needed this this color to connect the lighter with this vibrant color yep I okay like we're getting that. there we're getting there <laughs> you're doing great i'm sure 
<laughs> right? Yeah, we believe in you. All right, so I just want some vibrance to these, and I think that does it. I'm gonna take my bamboo skewer and go ahead and scratch in. Good. Yes, liking that. I like to just break up that mass of color. Awesome. I like that. I'm gonna come back here in a minute and add even more highlights, but we're gonna let that dry. So we're gonna move on to doing a little bit more on our stems. We actually did a thing where, I'm looking at this brush board, and we actually did a thing on social media, on Instagram, where um, the stories part of it, they put up like one of my palettes, and they were asking, I did on my Instagram too, but um, they're asking, okay, what do you think Lori's painting by looking at this palette? And so mm. when I'm looking at this brush board, I'm like, okay, like I can kind of see like, yeah, I could think definitely earthy, definitely could be some flowers. Yeah. And uh, some people actually did get it. Really? Yeah. Some they people guessed? did guess. Yeah. <gasps> Sunflowers. That's cool. Yeah. We had some sunset guesses also, which I could see that um, with those, kind of like those warm colors. Isn't that fun? That is fun. So I want to add... Looking at this and comparing it to like the, the sample image, I want to add a little bit more dark kind of in here. And then we'll okay. go in with a few little blue touches as well. So we're going to add some black to our palette. And I'm going to do some more blue. I have some blue way up here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Okay. So let's start with blue, knowing that black is a, you know, I didn't even wash out my brush, but you know what? I'm okay with that. See, like it just having that orange since it's a the complementary color of blue on my brush just desaturates that blue. Mm. Like it does not bother me. In fact, I like it. You know, the more that you can mix your colors, like custom colors, like kind of like if you have the button from the starter box. I was hey saying, I mix my own colors. Um, the world just opens up. Like you can do so many more things and you just feel more confident. And also if you got the wetlands box, here's our little, it's like a little artist frog. You might not be able to see it on camera, nice. but if you got that, wear it proudly. Like we're gonna try and include a little button in each of our uh, boxes that's that we fun. do. Yeah, I, I like think that. so. Yeah, that's fun. And hopefully we can like get some custom aprons going too. Ooh. It'll be awesome. See what I did, I just added a bunch more black. All right, here we go. So we're gonna do a shadowy color. So I do want it to be a dark value. And I do want it to still lean green though, okay? So I think we're getting there. I, honestly, I'm just gonna kind of pick up some of this yellow over here. We have a little bit of yellow and I'll add some more. Okay, still want it to be dark. So let's see how this does for us. Yep. All right, and once again, we're gonna kind of use that dry brush technique. So I'm gonna take off some of that paint okay, where it's a little bit lighter and then I'm gonna kind of, ooh, there we go. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of add a few strokes to indicate shadow and dimension. So it's not so flat. Okay, can you see that? Totally. Yeah. And especially like this stem would be in the back, right? So it would probably right. be darker. Man, um, that's cool. And it's making it so much just deeper. Yes. I honestly, I could do this for days, like just going and adding more and more and more. <laughs> the hard part's knowing when to stop. You don't have to stop. No. Just letting you know. Yes. Don't stop. Okay, so while I've got this paint, I'm just gonna keep mixing it. So I'm gonna add some yellow to this and see kind of what we get. And I'm gonna um, do a little bit more blue even. The yellow lightens it up just like a white would. Um, or not just like, but it will help tint because it has kind of a lighter. Oh. that lighter value to it, but I will go ahead and still pick up some white. I'm liking that, that's pretty. Um, I think I want a little more blue. There we go. Now this is where I'm just gonna add a few little touches. Let me try to mix that. So I'm gonna add a few little touches wherever I want them. Let's do like at the top of that leaf. Okay, maybe kind of there. And maybe one of those. Maybe this stem is kind of in front, so I can kind of pick up on that. And then I think this leaf we decided was kind of in the front. If you get too much on there, you can use a palette knife or your little scraper tool and just scrape it off. Okay, there we go. Um, 
A little touch there. Maybe one of those leaves. There we go. I'm liking that. What do you think, Kanan? I'm liking it. that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and now we're going to lean into the yellow quite a bit here and kind of get some little, few little vibrant touches. You guys see that? And honestly, if we want this thalo green, if we add a little bit of that, watch what happens. It's like super powerful. See how that just like, oh snap, like made it so much more vivid. Woke it up. <laughs> yeah, it is awake now. All right, let's test that there. Okay, I like it. So I'm just gonna pick a couple little spots where I wanna whew, put that and mm. um, if you did our tulip um, bouquet project, this idea is kind of familiar, kind of adding just a few little like different um, hues and values, just adding little touches. And if you want to like embrace kind of like what we did with the tulip bouquet where you add like little dots and stuff, feel free. I didn't do it on this one. Um, just because I want to show you something, something different. All right, so I'm going to brush this off on my brush board and then I'm going to, I think the final color that I want to add to the stems is just kind of a yellowy green. Again, we kind of did that before, but it wasn't really showing up a whole lot. So I wanted to just kind of add that a little bit more. So I'm going to take this yellow right here and I'm just going to add a, the tiniest bit of black. Hmm. Okay. And since my brush is already dirty, I can kind of go with what's there. Yeah, actually I kind of like that. Definitely leans more yellow. And so we'll just hit a few little places like that. I'm going to make, I, mean, I think I want this stem to be in front actually. So this leaf is in the very front. This stem is kind of in front here. There we go. And then this one maybe will be in front of this one. This is where I'm kind of deciding like these are kind of my, these are my highlight colors for my stems. And so I'm kind of deciding where is the sun hitting these? Where is the sun? I mean, you don't, I mean, we're not, we're not being that technical. Don't worry too much, but it's nice to add a little bit of that flare. What do you think? I love that. I like it. Okay. If you want to go in and scratch in some more, you can. Uh, you know I'm a fan of that. Okay. All right. So I think now we are ready to cut in our, sec our final layer of our background. So I want to make sure that things are dry first. So let me take a minute and dry again. Let our paint dry. It's coming together. I'm okay if it's a little tacky because I'm not painting on top of it. I just don't want it to blend into my back, background paint. Mm. Okay, I think we're ready to add some more of our background. So for this, for this stage, we're going to go a little bit lighter. And as you can see, we have kind of darker down here and lighter as we get up. So we're going to embrace that even more, push it even more, and we're going to be a even a little bit more neutral. <clears throat> This time, I'm going to really try to just use my half inch on the inside part as opposed to getting the round brush. Because with the round brush, it's great for details, but I don't want to be too detailed. I still want to keep that loose feel. And so a larger brush actually helps you to paint more loose. Did you know that? I did not know that. Now you do. <laughs> now I do. Now you do. I've learned so many things today. I know, right? I love teaching. That's awesome. Don't quiz me, but I've learned so many things today. <laughs> don't quiz you. I'm sorry I quiz you so much. It's funny, I was watching back some of the like videos that we've done. Oh, you know what? And remember too, we get, we're gonna need a good amount, so let's be generous here. I was watching back some of the like beginning, like the beginner series and some of the other tutorial, the first box that we did at the Acrylic yeah. Starbucks. I was like, oh, I keep quizzing Keenan because I like talking to you during while well, doing this. It help, you know, he's a nice Keenan is a nice, nice buffer. Yeah. When filming, because it can be, you know, no matter how many times you do it, I think you're no, it's still okay a bit to be nervous. quizzed, but you know. I don't know everything. What? As daunting as that seems, Keenan oh. does not know all the things. You know what? I actually don't know all the things either. That can't be true. It is, I promise. Mm. The more you get to know me, then you'll probably be like, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a whole series called The More You Get to Know Lori. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I don't think I would watch that. <laughs> don't do it, don't watch don't that. Do all right, let's see where we're at, okay. I want to even go a little darker. So I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm going to add a little more black. Even maybe a little bit more. Yes, I like that. So I, when, I, when we put in this final background layer, we're still going to leave 
parts of that first background layer, but we're just gonna kind of brush on some depth, if you will. And then this is also our chance to kind of fix any little things that we're not loving. All right, so once again, it's really nice to have a nice tape. I'm trying not to waste paint, but I'm telling you at home, I'm just all about doing this, <laughs> all about just going like that. <laughs> but I'm like, I should probably show them how to do it without feeling like they're wasting paint. But you know what, it's not wasted paint unless it's left in the tube. That's what I say. That's right. All right, so just gonna come and go in again, kind of starting in the middle, yeah. See how it's kind of like a nice little neutral, slightly darker, um, it's not really slightly darker actually. Let's add a tiny bit more black because I do want it to be a little darker. Thinking that in between in here is gonna be more of a shadow and okay. in between the flowers, yeah. um, typically, not always. We're just kind of, we're not kind of, we're not being super exact. We just want to pretend like we have some, you know, or it just makes it look more interesting, I think, to have that dimension. Yes, okay, that is definitely what I want. So I'm gonna kind of tap that in any of these little places where it's like, okay, there's not gonna be a lot of light coming in there. Later we will add, like when we do our light, we will come in to a few spots to add some light down here. But for the most part, we're gonna kind of make this the dark, more shadowy area. Ooh, I like that. And we're gonna come over here. And this is the time too, like if you're not loving some of these pink, maybe like that's too much, I like a little, um, you can kind of taper that. If you love it, just leave it. You can have as much pink as you want on there. Yeah, I think I would actually like a little more. Like the more I see it, the more I'm like, ooh, I'm, <laughs> I'm keeping that, I like that. It's just a good little pop. Yes, I like, I kind of like the surprise of it, if that makes yeah. sense, or like, like maybe from far away, I kind of like the idea of like being from far away, you can't really tell, but then when you come up, you're like, oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. So I like a little, like I, I'm gonna do a little less than what's here, just to kind of make the ones that are bright a little more important. All right, so coming in there, and again, like we are not, this is not like a full coverage one. We already covered the white with the pink, we already did a base coat with the brighter blue. So now we're just coming in and kind of adding some oomph. Like, <laughs> that's funny, I don't usually use that word. I like adding it's oomph. true. No, that's good. Add that oomph. <laughs> I'm trying to like get my energy up, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, come on, this is good. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this is where I want to probably start adding some white. And I might even add a little more blue just for some vibrance. I'm gonna first touch a couple of these spots where I feel like it would be in shadow. Hmm. Like the in-between things. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some white now and add it to this pile. Um, that looks pretty good. I might do a touch of blue just to add some vibrance back in there. And then with the blue, this is a, um, kind of a blue that leans more purple, and so I'm gonna add a touch of yellow also anytime I add more blue, because I want to neutralize my blue. Mm -hmm. There we go, I'm gonna add some water. Keep it gliding, and let's see how we are. Oh, okay. Is that gonna be too, add a little more, yeah, blue, a little more yellow, and a touch of black. I may have gone too far with the white, but it's not bad. There we go. All right, so come up here. Nope, that's too gray. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're real here. It's a process. With it the, is a process. With the mixing colors. That's no joke. Okay, I think we're probably closer a minute ago. There we go. Yes. Okay, it's worth it to just kind of keep keep going, plugging along. And I'm still going to leave some of that vibrant blue back there, but I want to kind of bring and introduce this in. If you like the dry brush kind of transition, like go for it. If you want it to be a little more smooth, just add a little more water to your brush and you'll be good to go there. So as you can see, I'm really not worried about um, doing too much. If I do want to reshape, I can. Like up here with this being kind of like my top flower, I might come and like reshape just a little bit, but I want to be careful not to make it look too forced. You know, I want it to still look, uh, I guess painterly is the word we've been using. Painterly is a painterly. great word for yeah. that. 
Awesome. Okay, so we have, now what I'll do is um, find a few places down here where we can kind of add a little bit of light because as you know, like light can kind of pop through here and there. And see how you can see here that it's very much a dry brush. Um, I love that color blue though. Yeah? Just in and of itself, it's a great color. And then with that yellow, it's just nice. Love okay. it. I'm glad you like it. It took me 12 tries. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, not, I'm actually not just kidding. <laughs> not funny. So I'm gonna, now, now that I've added some light down here, I remember I wanna add a little bit of dark up there just to kind of like connect it. So I'm gonna kind of just add a little bit more blue and a tiny bit more black to my pile and then um, brush off most of this and then kind of just find a few little places up here where I wanna kind of add a little bit of something. Yeah, see that? You could even yeah. add a little bit more white up there if you wanted to. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So, we're not done yet. We have our finishing touches to do. Yes. Make sure we've got everything, yep. Okay, so you've got, if you've gotten the spark, great. Now we're just gonna kind of spruce it up and call it good. Nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a few more highlights, so some lighter yellow, and then I'm gonna introduce you to how to use those neo colors that I mentioned in the beginning mm. of this video. That is, I'm looking forward to that part. All right, so let's let's go with this yellow real quick. I'm gonna take, add some more paint, and you can still mix in the same piles that you've had. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start here, and uh, you know what, I got a little bit of orange there, which is great. And I do want some white, some clean white. that. Okay, I think I'm gonna like that. I, I am having some green coming through my brush, but that's actually okay, because as we did in the beginning, we neutralized that green, or that red with the green to make our kind of our yellow. All right, let's see. Whew, yes, here we go. So I'm gonna use this sparingly, but I'm gonna come in and just decide where like the brightest highlights might be. Just kind of do a little, few little touches, okay, here and there. And I kind of am following along what I've already established as some of the highlights. Okay, and then let's go a little more pure lemon yellow here and add just a couple more spots. Yeah. This adds some brightness, which I like. Yeah, that looks awesome. You like that? Yeah, I do. This is where you can kind of just decide, where, what do I want my tulips to look like? I don't want it to like be half and half light and dark, so I do want to put a little bit of something on that other side. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. What do you think? I think I'm good. I love those flowers. <laughs> Although we have established that Keenan will not say, it looks terrible. Mm -mm. Maybe he would. We haven't gone there yet, though. I doubt I would ever say that. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you want to scratch in, this will be the time. Definitely scratch in. Yes. And I'm just I actually really like that closed one on the left. Yeah? Yeah, I think that may be my favorite little buddy. That's your favorite one? Awesome. All right, so I think we've got, we're gonna add a little bit more to the, the um, centers of our flowers by taking Really, we can just take um, some of this green, thalo green, and then adding a little bit of red, as we kind of did earlier. That makes it kind of purple, so then I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. That's a very bright green. Oh, I think we forgot to add black. Black. I did it again, Keenan. I just, <laughs> 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 I like, me and black, like I, I don't use it that much like in my own painting, and so, um, Sometimes when I'm mixing it here, I forget how strong black is because I tend to mix my own blacks or I use like a, um, a dark blue, like a Payne's gray. Mm. It's just kind of funny. This is leaning, there's a little bit of shadow leaning, a little bit green, so I can put some red in there to kind of bring it back. Since red is the complement of green. Not that much, here we go. Getting there. 
I'm going for a little bit of a brown. There mm, we go. Okay. There we go. And if I think it's too something, I can just add, okay, tiny bit of black, tiny bit of black. Okay, tiny bit more. There we go. Okay, so I just want this to kind of show a, little, a few little highlights kind of in the, in the centers there. I'm just gonna dab. So like if you look at a sunflower, like a traditional sunflower, you'll see it has seeds, right? And so it- Oh, so it has that little, and, little texture. Yep, and sometimes it has like a little ring around it too, like a lighter ring. So you oh. could play on that if you would like to. Um, I might even add like a teeny tiny bit of white. It's starting to look a little purpley, so I'm gonna add some. Yeah, there we go. And then I might just add a couple little, like where would there be like a little highlight? Where if I kind of establish that the light is. And then just a few little dabs. Okay, might not show up very well on camera, but it's there. It's there. It is there. Okay. You know, I'm gonna actually, since we are trying to, I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit lighter so you can see it. How's that sound? Okay. Okay. All right, there we go. And we, one thing that I like to do is I like to add some kind of surprise colors to the center, like you can see on this one here. Like I added a tiny bit of green, which we'll do with the neo color. But then I also Ooh. added a tiny little blue and a tiny little bit of um, red. So this is our finishing touches stage. So we're gonna like just kind of fine tune just a tiny bit, add some of our own personality or style to it, whatever you wanna do. If you like it the way it is, great. You are good to go. But I'm going to add a tiny bit of pink to the center by taking my red and a little bit of white. And you know, you can get more paint out if you want. I just like to use what's on here. And this is where you wanna be just a little bit, you know, light. I don't wanna go crazy. So I'm just gonna kind of pick like one or two little spots where you might have a tiny bit showing through. Okay, we already have, that connects that with the pink that we already have going on in our stems. Um, and the next thing I wanna do is add just a little bit of light blue. So I'm gonna take my blue. Uh, let's see, do I have some here? Might add some more. Get some blue. Pal, it's a little messy today. <laughs> All right, take some blue and there's a lot of water right there. I'll add it over here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to get kind of a nice little, nice light color. Now, if you're going with straight blue, this is wet brush, I'm gonna dab it off. If you're going for with um, a straight blue like this, ultramarine blue, you will want to desaturate it. I'm kind of adding it onto something that's already desaturated, and so I'm okay with that. To desaturate it, you could add um, a little bit of yellow. You don't have to if you don't want to, because this is okay to have some bright color. So I'm just gonna come in and just kind of tap in there. You see that? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like just some little details that um, add a little something. And honestly, like if I were smearing it at home, I would just probably smear it a little bit. <laughs> or scratch in. You can scratch in if you don't want to use your fingers. And then I want to add a tiny bit of this color to my stem. So once again, I'm going to use that dry brush technique by taking off most of the paint. And then I'm just going to kind of pick a few little places to kind of um, add that blue, okay? This kind of helps our background talk to the stems and just add a little bit of kind of a surprise. What do you think? It's nice. You like that? Yeah. Okay. All right, I think that is good for that. So now what we can do is we can get out the Neo colors to oh, add hello. some extra details. Yes, we're almost done. Actually, you know what, Keenan? I lied. I, I oh. see that this looks, I want to add just a few more highlights to you know the what? background. I could, I could feel the deceit coming. <laughs> you have that sense. I have the sense. I feel like we need just a few little more highlights kind of on here. So let's do it. Oh, I like that. Just like a couple, you know, like this is the part where you have to like, I mean, we decided this was kind of in the front. So you can kind of add that in there, kind of decide, okay, maybe I have a couple little spots that kind of have some, there. Anywhere else, see maybe this one here. Just a couple little taps. And maybe we kind of do a couple little taps in the, the, flat, the um, center too. Okay, nice. was that worth it? What do you think? Totally worth it. No, I loved <laughs> it. When you put that on the first 
the first leaf down there. Yeah, you know, honestly, that really is part of the artistic process. Like the creative process is, you might think, okay, I think I'm good, but then you're like, you know what? No, I think it needs a little something, and and that's okay. Add that, and you're like, oh, okay, that was it. Yeah, it's totally okay to do that. Yeah. All right, so in your box, if you got the Wetlands box, you have two Neo colors. You can see these have been loved and used, and one of mine broke. That's all good. Um, we have phthalo green and we have canary yellow. And so this is a cool yellow and then this is a, a cool green. So like it, it's just like the paint color that we have. But with neo colors, and like I said, you've got a whole sheet in the box like that gives you so many ways that you can use neo colors. They're water soluble, meaning you can um, draw with it and then get it wet. Mm. You can dip it in watering and write with it. There's so many things you can do with it. So. Uh, Look forward to the the uh, bonus project. We'll do a whole a whole project with neo Which colors. Which is super cool. I'm excited. Okay, so you can kind of I'm testing it out, and you see that's a nice bright color. They're kind of like crayons, but so much cooler, so much cooler. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna add a few little touches. This is kind of following that vibe of like a few little bright touches. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna kind of follow along, kind of where we added some highlights and restrain, I'm trying to restrain myself not do every every little thing right <laughs> you can go Easier a little, you can go a little crazy yeah i know it's like after this if i have to restrain myself i need to get out another piece of paper and just like <laughs> have that right okay i like that gonna call that good and now i'm gonna come up with my yellow and i think i've got enough there showing yep and i am going to kind of do some little um kind of like outlines okay Oh, cool. Just loose. Okay, and I'm okay if it goes outside the edge. Like that, to me, is pretty. Okay, and I'm not completely like doing the whole outline again. I'm just kind of giving the idea. And if you want to hold it kind of loose, feel free. But this just kind of gives a little extra um, detail. And I'm here for that. Oh, see, I like, I kind of like, now I want to purposely go off the edge. <laughs> I like that. See, but that was kind of an accident, and I'm like, you know what? I want to do it more. Yeah, that looks super cool, actually. Like that? Okay. And then if you wanted to, you could you could add yellow a few places on your stems if you want. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Try to hold back a little. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call that good, Keenan. What oh. do you think, actually? I think it looks since great. Since you're used to me being deceitful, I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and add, <laughs> add a couple more little spots. Okay, so I think that's good. Now, I do want to make one little, one uh, note about neo colors. Neo colors, they are a so they're water soluble, meaning they will reactivate with water. So that means they not they are not fixed and permanent like acrylic would be. So kind of like watercolor, if you were to get watercolor wet again, it would you know it could uh, reconstitute. And so. If you want to, you don't have to fix it with fixative, but if you wanted to do that, like if you're just going to put it somewhere and it's not going to be near water, you're not worried about it, it's fine the way it is. But if you do want to fix it, because maybe you eventually want to varnish it, there's a couple different products that you can use. Um, this here is a natural fixative and it, it is something that you, it's made out of milk casein, I think. That's why there's cows on the front. <laughs> but you can't, it's odor free, so you can spray this inside. So what you would do is you would take it and I can actually show you, um, just do like a light mist. Okay, and then I would wait for that to dry, and then I would come back and do several more coats, or at least maybe like four or five coats. That's okay. what I usually do. And then you test it to see if the neo color comes back up on your finger, or um, if it doesn't, then you know it's fixed, and nice. then you can varnish it. Now, one thing about this is that it does take several coats, and sometimes I'm not patient enough for that. And so, <laughs> another product that you can try, but I do love that I can spray it inside. Yeah, that is you nice. You know, because sometimes, like, you know, we're in the Midwest, I don't have beautiful, sore, warm, sunny weather every true, day. True, true. Yeah. There's also this aerosol workable fixative here, and we carry both of these, by the way. Um, but you can take it outside in a well ventilated area and you can spray. And so I found with this, you don't need quite as many coats. Mm. You can kind of fix it and it's done. And I, and I really trust it when I'm varnishing. So. Okay. I know that when I varnish, it's not going to reconstitute my, my colors. But once again, if you're not doing a whole lot with it, like you don't have to fix it. But if you do decide, hey, you know what? I think I want to varnish that. So 
uh, or give fix a different try, um, feel free. Sweet. So I hope you enjoyed making these wild sunflowers with us and be sure to share if you do create this project on our Facebook group at um, Let's Make Art Acrylic or on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art. Thank you.